determine who is in government after the election is called. Of course Kevin Rudd is going to run to the polls in the next two days because the boats keep coming, the debt is blowing out by $3 billion a week uh, and unemployment continues to rise, heading towards 800,000. Uh, so if I were Kevin Rudd, I'd be going to the polls uh, as soon as possible. But from my perspective, it's about putting the Australian people out of their misery. Uh, because the economy is deteriorating at the hands of Kevin Rudd and Labor. Nothing's changed. If we don't get on election soon, uh, you will see the government lose total control of the economy. Uh, as they've already lost total control of the budget. Uh, now, I fully expect that this week the Reserve Bank will cut interest rates, and they'll do so not because the economy is doing really well, but because the economy is struggling. You've got a government without any economic direction. Uh, you've got a government that can't manage its own budget, let alone run the economy. It has no plan for the future. It just has a plan for Kevin Rudd. So now is the time to get on with it. Now is the time to make things happen. Now is the time for the community to claim back uh, the direction of Australia. David Coleman is an outstanding candidate here in Banks, someone with real life experience in business, uh, raising a family and comes from the local community. Uh, this is a story of our candidates around Australia and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, are there any questions here? Uh, well, the bank levy at the moment uh, is still unclear in relation to the banks themselves. Uh, we are going to properly consult with individual banks. Uh, for example, smaller banks uh, have a major issue uh, with the levy and the larger banks don't want one because people gravitate their savings towards the bigger banks at any rate. So we want to get to the bottom of it. We've previously said we'll have a financial system inquiry and that is properly the place to formulate policy. Uh, we are not going to respond to policy on the run by having a policy response on the run. Do IMF have advice that Australia have on their view? Is that their advice? Uh, well, they're entitled to their advice, but Australia is the one that governed, uh, properly governed its financial system. It was uh, our government that put in place uh, the financial regulation that ensured that our banks did not fail. Uh, and. Uh, we will go defer to our own experience before we start taking external advice from others who have failed in providing advice in the past. How will the tax on cigarettes, Sorry. Tax on cigarettes uh, Again, we will consult properly with the appropriate stakeholders uh, and one of the groups that I'm most keen to uh, consult with in relation to this is my colleagues in health uh, and uh, also to consult appropriately with uh, various people who can model the inflationary impact of that decision. When we'll have more to say about it in the next few days. Sorry, when does the coalition plan to put out its economic statement? Well, we'll put out our economic statement before the election and after the pre-election uh, fiscal outlook. I want to say this. Uh, for Labor to start demanding our numbers uh, about what we're going to do for the next three years is a bit rich because they haven't presented their numbers for the next three years on their policies for the next three years. So all they've presented is a state of the book as they think it exists. They haven't actually delivered any numbers on new policies that Kevin Rudd is going to announce over the election campaign, yet they're demanding that we do it. Uh, so I think the hypocrisy is a bit rich. The second thing I'd say is we're not going to cop a lecture from the Labor Party about accuracy and numbers. I mean, for crying out loud, every number over the last six years has been dead wrong and the budget is bleeding by $3 billion a week. So please, no sanctimonious lectures about integrity of numbers from the Labor Party. Uh, you know, it's like Lucifer giving a, a lecture on morality, the Labor Party giving a, a lecture on accuracy of numbers. How will the coalition take to the Fed schools plan that only other communications Well, again, this comes down to the numbers. It's the government that has already committed that money in the budget. So it should have already been paid for in the budget. So it should be there, I mean, unless there's another black hole in the budget, which there may well be. But the fact is, uh, we're not in a competition at the moment because we have a starting point. The starting point has usually been PFO. And uh, unless we reject, specifically reject Labor savings, uh, the money is going to be there for those programs. Uh, given the deteriorating state of the budget revealed yesterday, is there a concern that
coalition cuts could be too damaging to the economy and push up unemployment further? Uh, well, look, hang on. We are seeing unemployment rise now under Labor, going to 800,000 Australians unemployed. Uh, they said the unemployment rate wouldn't get above 5.5 per cent. It's now going to 6.25 per cent. Uh, there is no handbrake on unemployment rising under Labor. There is no handbrake. The only handbrake is a change of government. If you want to hang on to your job and have job security, you will not be guaranteed that job security under Labor because everything they say and do is pointing the economy in the wrong direction. It's only the coalition that is going to make the decisions that get the economy back on track. So will the coalition look at curbing cuts then? Uh, well, we, hang on. Uh, I don't accept the, the, the economic logic of Labor about cuts. Uh, and I do not accept. Uh, La Labor running a scare campaign on cuts uh, is, is, you know, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous because they're the ones that over the last two weeks have come up with savings measures out of the blue that they didn't consult anyone about that are having a very real impact on families. So, again, you know, Labor lecturing on numbers? Come on. I mean, any, any others? Guys? Be? Sorry? Any? Well, a change of government will deliver confidence. A change of government will deliver certainty and stability back to policy making in Australia. People are crying out for predictable, stable government. No more left field decisions on FBT. No more left field decisions on uh, on, on tobacco taxes or or uh, car or, or car cha car regulation changes. Or everything is out of left field. Everything is a thought bubble from Kevin Rudd. No more thought bubbles. That will deliver the stability Australians cry out for. Uh, and the second thing we do, we have a plan that focuses on number one, living within your means. Number two, getting rid of the carbon tax and the mining tax. And both of those taxes are still very much in the budget and the carbon tax is still going up to $38 a tonne under Labor. Uh, number three, we have a six point plan on productivity growth, including welfare to work and an issue that is important in this local area. Uh, cleaning up the Georges River. We have committed to a green army, eventually 15,000 strong, that is going to work to clean up uh, major parts of Australia's environment, including the Georges River. And, uh, and we are very focused. We are very focused on getting rid of red tape and green tape, how essential that will be to take the handbrake off business. Uh, and whether it be the future of financial reforms or, or whether it be uh, the simple red tape of having double bureaucracy, a bureaucracy in Canberra and a bureaucracy in, uh, in the capital cities of each state doing the same job it has to come to an end. What do you yeah? think the um, funding earmarked for new, <laughs> for new detention centres says about the government's asylum policy? Uh, well, uh, surely we can all see the hypocrisy in Labor saying not one person is going to be settled in Australia now. But we hear today they're announcing new detention facilities with extra capacity. Uh, isn't that just a touch hypocritical? And it just proves Kevin Rudd's a fake. Kevin Rudd is a fake when it comes to the numbers, and Kevin Rudd is a fake when it comes to the promises. And nothing illustrates it more than he said no more people are going to arrive on Australia's shores and be settled in Australia yet he is now building extra capacity for detention centres right here in Australia. Okay? We know Mr Conway is in silence, but why we don't have Chinese He, he can say, he can say, he can say. Yeah, why we don't have Asian or Chinese back on the candidates? Uh, well, we actually do. We have Chinese candidate in Western Australia for the Liberal Party. Uh, and uh, we've had in fact, uh, there are a number of Chinese candidates, including uh, in Victoria, who I was just campaigning with a few days ago, and Chisholm, John Nguyen. So we have a number of Chinese candidates right across the country, uh, and uh, we're very proud of our Chinese candidates. It was the Liberal Party that had uh, the first Chinese representative in Parliament. She's standing right behind you. Uh, and uh, it's the Liberal Party that will have the first Chinese representative in the House of Representatives after the next election, because I'm pretty sure that he's going to hold his seat. He's going to win his seat. So uh, we will be the first political party in Australia to have 
a person of Chinese origin in the House of Representatives in Canberra. Isn't that fantastic so and appropriate? Are you going to persuade more Chinese people to vote for Liberal? And any comment on the new policy of the 457 work visa? Yeah. Well, there are, there, you've raised two issues. Number one is when people come to Australia through the appropriate mechanisms, we welcome them, we encourage them, we want them to settle in Australia. Uh, the Labor Party is against 457 visas. The Labor Party has been against settled, consistent, predictable migration patterns where people come here and work and start. Now, Kevin Rudd voted for the legislation to try and crack down or change 457s when there was no royalty. He did that. So he's a complete hypocrite if he is out there saying he wants to encourage skilled migration to Australia. Uh, and uh, I think that's... That's pretty obvious. Uh, the second thing is the Chinese community have the same values as the broader Australian community. We believe in family, we believe in enterprise, we believe in hard work. And they are the values of the Liberal Party as much as they are the values of the broader Chinese community in Australia. Um, the the free trade agreement with China has been dragged on and on. So um, if you are the next um, treasurer, Will you fast, fast track uh, the, the process? Absolutely. It's been, it was only the coalition that was prepared to put the effort in to make free trade agreements real, particularly in our region, in our Asian region. Uh, after six years, Labor's got absolutely nothing. The former chief executive of Hong Kong uh, specifically asked me uh, to help progress developments in relation to a free trade agreement. Uh, and I was a shadow... Oh, I'm sorry. I was a shadow minister. I was a shadow minister uh, and uh, uh, he was asking me to do it because he was uh, at a wit's end with Labor. Uh, so we will be the ones that progress it. We're not going to trade away Australia's national interests in relation to that free trade agreement. Let me get it right with China. Uh, but we will uh, certainly be the ones uh, who have the capacity to negotiate it. And I'll tell you what, uh, Kevin Rudd might speak Mandarin but a lot of the Chinese uh, community in China don't like what they hear. So uh, I think it's sometimes better for him to speak English and uh, speak in common sense than speak in Mandarin and speak in riddles. Anything else? What, what's your strategy for the economy after mining boom? Well, the first thing is the mining boom should not have had to end. Uh, and it's only when you impose new taxes and when the cost of labour and everything else get out of control uh, that these things come to an end. Kevin Rudd said it wasn't going to end. Uh, everything does come to an end. Bubbles do burst. But how do you sustain activity? Well, you don't crucify it with a new tax like a carbon tax or a mining tax. And we're getting both. And I'm confident you'll see new projects announced after we are elected, if we are elected, because people want to see the cost of doing business in Australia come down. They want to see a predictable, stable, reliable, trustworthy government. It's only the coalition that can do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching ABC News 24. Good morning, I'm Simon Pallon. That was the Shadow Treasurer, Joe Hockey, addressing the media in Sydney on the government's latest budget announcement. Well, for more on this, let's go to our political reporter, Andrew Green, who's in Canberra. Uh, Andrew, uh, we saw uh, Joe Hockey there.